for like as far as like the character in his entirety, like what he what he's capable of. I think that was covered. So everything else would just be matchup stuff, right? Okay. Yeah. You wanna you wanna talk about some matchups? Uh, yeah. Sure. We can do that. We can start off with this character actually. So. Well. Yeah, go, go ahead. Let me. Uh, let me go look it up. Um, gotta look up the matchup chart, actually. I don't know how, like, the, this matchup chart was pretty old, right? Uh, I think 2014, 13, 2015. 2013, 2014, something like that. Let me, uh, let me go grab Yeah, it. 20, 2013 is the one on the Mizumi Wiki. There's been a little bit of shifts around in the tiers as far as the Japanese community is concerned since then. I don't know if a lot of individual matchups have shifted that much. Yeah. Especially with Anacharis. His his don't change a whole lot. Unless they figure out how to give him a tech hit somehow. I don't know if we've mentioned that specifically, but the the defining thing that makes Anacharis the worst character in this game is that he doesn't have access to the push block mechanic, which is essential for being able to play this game because of how focused on uh, aggression and pressure it is. You need a strong option to be able to mitigate that. He just doesn't have that option. That alone is what brings him to the bottom. There's some other things, like he doesn't have access to a normal throw. We didn't talk about his throws because he doesn't have any, yeah. although he can tech throws. Um, so he, he's got some uh, s several weird problems that kind of pile up and accumulate that make him the worst character in the game, but the worst one is the fact that he can't push block. Yeah, by far. Uh, not having access to a push block just uh, means that he has a, he's forced to take extended pressure series and uh, option select throws uh, endlessly. So, if he did have a push block, I think he'd probably be one of the stronger characters in the game. So, I agree. When when, I, you, I when feel... you play the character, yeah, you want to try to keep yourself in a situation where you don't have to use the push block because as long as you're at neutral or you're being aggressive, then you're a good character. It's it's only when you're being pressured that his real weaknesses start to prop up. Yeah. So, in this matchup, uh, like, on the Japanese uh, matchup chart? Yeah. Uh, this one, they have it as a 6.5, right? Yeah. 6.5, 3.5. Yeah. So... All best favor. Yeah. Just okay. a heads up, heads up. Anakris has zero favorable matchups. He has zero... He, he, five, five against himself. Yeah. The five, he only has one five, five against himself. Which is why, like, he beats the hell a out terrible, of him. He's, annoying matchup. He's yeah. terrible against himself, so he may not have any favorable matchups. So, uh, but yeah, all his matchups are considered uh, losing matchups. Uh, it's just how bad they are, they're dependent on the character. So, uh, I'll talk about uh, the Albath matchup in particular. So, Albath is a uh, charge character, right? Or Rico, as he's called in uh, Emmer. So, this character is a charge character, right? So, Mind you that you have uh, access to dive kicks as overheads, right? So he's he also lacks uh, proper like anti air options, but they can they can surprisingly hit you quite a bit if you're not careful. So like if you're just you know over committing to like jump medium punch a little bit too much or, or something, you might get hit by his stand heavy punch or all the other. But all those other tools, uh, he's mostly going to end up using air to air as primary uh, way of keeping you in check there. The main reason why this matchup in particular is bad is because of his pressure, his grounded pressure. He has a really strong grounded pressure where he can extend it by like doing uh, dashing medium punch, jab, jab, and then he can continually lock you down with jab, 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 right? And uh, this allows him to either sneak in throws or use his, uh, his instant overhead, in which case it's super hard to block. And another good thing this character has is his command grabs. He has two command grabs with two distinct frame data. One's a little slower, but it has much more invulnerability to it. And uh, the other one is a little faster, but also has invulnerability. So he can use both of those tools to kind of like blow you up if you stand there and you can't really do buttons back at him because he can just command grab you. Uh... Yeah, walk jab makes this matchup really impressive. Like I said, he uses a lot of Air normals, a big problem in this matchup is um, all that's jump strong. Uh, jump strong will really prevent you from doing a lot of... Uh, trying to challenge him very much in the air. That move will beat pretty much all of your options, except if you're really specifically aiming to try to beat it. 
Uh, Jump Strong will stop you from doing that. Also, if you're just in the air and he sees you up there, Jump Strong is also an air throw option select that he has. So just jumping in and trying to guard his Jump Strong and then waiting for that to end so that you can hit him after he's finished his air series. It's not the best option because of uh, just what kind of button it is. Yeah, being an air throw option select. Um, but his pressure on the ground is really scary. And like Mar said, we mix you up with the uh, command throws, which are more or less guaranteed. This is one of the... So, for example, I talked about situations where you might want to use um, the neutral jump. Here, if you try to diagonal jump out of there, he's just going to hit you during your jump startup frames. If you do the neutral jump, you're going to get air reset, and he can still continue his pressure, but it changes the timing a little bit. It, makes, it provides an opportunity for him to mess up. If he starts pressure on you, you're very much in trouble. Um, yeah, one that, thing... Go, go ahead. Yeah, there's... So, like, the thing about his dashing uh, series is that he's always ducking, right? So, like, sometimes you might be able to get away with it with the neutral jump, as uh, as Holder stated, that uh, he'll go completely over all of his dashing normals. It, it happens very rarely, but sometimes it can happen, and that can net you a hit if, uh, if they're not tight on their pressure right because most of the time they're going to try to do their pressure and they might you might be able to sneak in the neutral jump but it's not a guaranteed option um even the if he's doing like the stand jab pressure and you neutral jump he will air reset you out of that with the stand jab but it changes the timing a little bit on how he has to deal with you he has to actually have a proper meaty after that he ha to it's he all the cards are still in his hand right but he you have to make him play them properly Basically, this matchup is he's just gonna keep doing light punches, giving you. This, you're gonna see this tongue animation for a while, and uh, you're gonna hope that you get out somehow and get into this mid-screen situation where you have to attempt to stop him from using any of his, like his jumping normals, which are very, very good jumping normals. He has really strong jumping normals, uh, and if you can prevent these situations from happening, uh, and you can somehow get into this position where. You, you're the aggressor, he has to actually deal with your overhead game because he's a charge character. Uh, the only thing you need to watch out for is if he does retain a charge, do not get too greedy because he's going to use Sonic Wave and that move can hit you and like you're going to end up in a very bad position because of that if you get hit by that at any time. Even in the air, if you get hit by it in the air, he's still guaranteed to hit uh, something. So do not get hit by Sonic Wave and definitely do not get hit by the gas. Yeah, um, some uh, things that an Acros has in this matchup that help him a little bit that some other characters don't is that if he gets knocked down the corner, the typical thing for Fish to do is to do a bubble setup. Now, against an Acros, he has to do his bubble setups extremely cleanly in order to have a proper meaty on you afterwards and then have the bubble coming in at you. Otherwise, if he's a little bit late with his bubble, he doesn't time everything very nice, you can backdash for free out of there. You don't have to deal with the bubble. Uh, that's an a pretty good option that Anacharis has against that, which is one of the things that makes Fish a very good character. Uh, other than in the corner, those bubble setups, sometimes they'll do them kind of mid-screen, like if you're closest to the corner and it's just going to come at you and it's something you have to deal with. Anacharis can jump right over them. Uh, he can it, stay in the air long enough that the bubble will just go under him and dissipate, and he doesn't have to deal with the bubble coming at him on the ground as much because of how long he can stay in the air with his three jumps. Um, it's still a situation where you know, all that's gonna jump at you, he's gonna... It's unlikely that he would try to do uh, an air throw because a situation in which he does a bubble in neutral, he's probably pretty far away. So, you can kind of just float over those. The the bubble things is something that he can kind of avoid, but all that's extra strengths that he gets and the kind of pressure that he can provide against Anacharis is enough that even though Anacharis is okay at dealing with some of the stronger options that Albeth has in normal matchups, like the bubble, um, the extra pressure that Albeth can show him is very difficult to deal with yeah. once you once you start blocking him. You want to you want to try to win this matchup without having to block. <laughs> if he if he starts getting in close to you and you're blocking, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So it can escalate and cause you just to lose the whole match from the momentum loss right there. Particularly, you want to be in these positions at all times. The moment it's the match starts to shift over here, this is the danger zone, and you want to get out of this situation as soon as possible, either by defending yourself properly or being playing as annoying as possible to make yourself hard to hit. 
Uh, if you do not, you're gonna get in this position where you don't want to be, or you're gonna get knocked down and have to deal with them. this bubble situation, where it's gonna lead into free damage for this uh, for this character, and then they're gonna reset it, and that could be the end of the game. Uh, and that's pretty much this matchup. That's how it works. Uh, and uh, I'll switch to another one now. All right, what do you want to do next? Uh, not on the window. Okay. Uh, the fish muscle up is pretty basic because he's a pretty basic character. He yeah. does a lot of normals and stuff, and yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, let's, let's do. Do you want to go top to bottom or bottom to top or? Let's do top to bottom. Top to bottom. Okay. All right, because the go. So this this character in particular is very very matchup heavy, uh, based on top to bottom. So the better the higher the character is in the tier list, the worse this character does. Um, so this is by far the worst matchup in the game for him mm -hmm. if the opponent has good enough execution to pull this character off right so this matchup is highly unstable depending on how good the uh the lord raptor or zabel uh as they call him in japan uh is and it's basically this character has access to a tool that which cannot be blocked uh which is his jumping light kick uh, the jumping light kick, if done uh, and hit on the ninth active frame, will not activate the proximity guard or in any character, and allowing him to get free combo, free free damage. Right? He's just going to be able to combo you off of it. Now, ninth or later, the last three active frames are unblockable. Oh, the last three? Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Usually, I go hit. So, like, I'm going to be bad at setting this up, but. Uh, Generically, he's gonna set it up either by doing offense or even defense, really, too. Because if you touch him and he blocks it, blocks you, he can guard cancel you and set it up really easily, too. So you have to be knowledgeable at baiting not only his, his uh, guard cancel, but even how to stop his general approaches, which is very difficult because he can attack at multiple angles because of his, how good his air dash is. Um, some problems that Anacris has in this matchup is mostly just dealing with the aerial game. Because uh, although Anacris ha does have decent normals to hitting a lot of the approaches, he's really just too fast to uh, react to. Uh, and it's very difficult to get away from him. So like in this position right here, let's say, you know, I didn't have any normal out and he just tries to, to air dash at me. It's already too late. I can't react in time and I'm not going to be able to get away. So you have to commit a, a lot in this matchup. Based on where you're at, you have to be knowledgeable about what buttons you're going to use, what timing. Uh, this this matchup can go really out of hand really fast. Um, other things are like he can, if he hits any drill, he gets to error reset you. In which case, he can do either pressure or he can go for an unblockable uh, as well. So if you get ever get hit by this drill, you're you're going to probably get unblockable. He has no way of getting out of that as well. Um, as with a, a lot of characters, uh, he's got amazing. Uh, command grabs that do massive damage, especially his, his uh, EX1, which he has a lot of setups for off of the air dash game. So, a lot of the well, matchups... Well, go ahead. A lot of the matchups just, like, understanding what position you're in, what can you do to stop him from approaching, and then trying to ride momentum to victory. But, there, here's the, here's another problem with the matchup. He has a teleport. So just when you're, you're going to win the match or you, you think you have it, no, he's just going to teleport out. So now you got to chase him all over the place again. So he really has two, he has pretty much every tool that you will ever want in a character in any game ever. And uh, he does massive damage. A lot. He has easy hit confirms um, that lead into 40, 45% depending on you know which combo route they did. So like you do like stand jab repeatedly and then do that or something yes. or do the uh, EX move so overall this matchup is bad because Anagris has difficulty dealing with all the angles that this character can attack in plus the unblockables plus the fact that his pressure is so good and he's Dawson yeah, yeah. which is another so Anagris generally if he's doing okay in a matchup it's because Anagris does have access to a pretty good set of uh Normals and options for neutral game. He can. There's a lot of things he can do. Zabbles are just better. 
Zabel, everything that Anacharis is good at, Zabel is just better at that than him. So even Anacharis's pot, like, the things that Anacharis is actually good at, regardless of his poor defensive options, Zabel crushes on those. Um, some of the main problems this matchup is that it's really difficult for Anacharis to do anything in the air, because Zabel has some of the best air-to-air -air options in the game. Particularly in this matchup, jump neutral strong. If you're trying to do anything in the air, and Zabel does uh, air dash neutral strong at you. That will air reset you out of probably anything that you're trying to do. After the air reset, uh, you get an unblockable setup into a lot of damage. Pretty consistently, Anacharis isn't very difficult to do it on, or relatively, he's relatively not as difficult to do it on as some other characters. He can, any anytime you're in the air, you're very much at risk of getting air reset into a lot of damage. That's something that Zabel just has access to. There, you don't really have an option to challenge um, jump neutral strong. That that's a move that you just have to respect. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I think the main problems with this matchup come from. Even on the ground, Anacharis generally like the range on things like his jabs are very good, but Zabel can extend a lot of his uh, his normals, and he can actually challenge him at range on the ground with. Uh, his uh, extended chains that he can do there from a lot of these angles that he the same angles that he can also kind of instant air dash uh, down fierce at or just jump in and do overheads and attacks you I this matchup is very difficult to to deal with <laughs> yeah. um I don't really have a good like route to victory if the Zabo player is uh, playing correctly, I there's not a lot that you can say like, well, you know, if you just do these things properly, like maybe you'll win. You you won't. Uh, <laughs> that there's there's not there's not a reliable way to. Um, this character doesn't have weaknesses that are reliably exploitable by Anacharis. Yeah. Like Mar said, even if you do get something going, he still has options like a reversal teleport that he can use to just get out of whatever you're doing. Of course. Reversal reversals in this game are fairly difficult. They're one frame, and then there's a myriad of different wake up timings based on which role you did, or if there's some kind of OTG thing going on. So it's difficult to do. Um, it's not free for him to try to do that. It's difficult to do a reversal, but it is something that he just always has. Yes. So yeah, the only advice I can give on this matchup is just understand your positions, where you're going to be at, and then try to ride momentum to victory that's the only thing you can do in this matchup because if he gets anything started you're probably going to lose uh, the, like like even if like the the player hypothetically doesn't have perfect execution it's going to be a hard time because uh, they can just attack at so many different angles and it's just really difficult to uh, deal with it so understand your positions understand that if you're like in this position he air dashes can i escape you know can i uh you know should i strike now or should I, can i get some breathing room and then the only other thing is learn how to punish Deffle, bitch. because that's just the that's just something that comes out in this matchup sometimes and if you know how to punish that you can that's like your only form of free damage in the matchup uh this move is a little more difficult to punish the regular uh tatsu but default it should be punished every time other than that, just understand your ranges, where you're going to be at, and try to react accordingly, but do it quickly because you don't have a lot of time. Uh, yeah, you have very little time to choose the proper response for an action that he's doing. You have to, if you see him going to the air, you have to immediately recognize whatever angle he's attacking and then choose the appropriate anti-air. A lot of the times he can attack at angles that are, you know, kind of above where, um, like, Crouch Strong would hit, but still too far away for Crouch Fierce really to work, so... There's, it's it's difficult to maintain the proper range to be able to deal with the stuff that this character wants to do. If you can get in on him, he does, like you can do, um, like uh, a preemptive like dash strong that'll stop him from trying to jump out and do stuff like that. Thing things that'll kind of just work against most characters also work on him. He doesn't have uh, like a weird hitbox thing like QB does or. His dash or his jump, even though while it's it is uh, fast, it's not one of the as fast as like gallons, for example. You can do like jab, dash jabs on him. Um, 
it's so he there's not like a character specific thing that you have to avoid doing or try to look for it's just an extremely grueling matchup to try to play from the neutral and yeah but i get another benefit i guess of this matchup is that he doesn't have a very reliable um like infinite block string like some characters have that they can kind of just brain dead like go into and anacris is has to deal with a lot of stuff he just wins by being better than you at everything else it's it's not so much that he has really busted pressure although his pressure is just not being able to tech hit him in general is extremely strong but it's not an ironclad lockdown that some other characters have yeah i think that pretty much covers this matchup it's uh it's pretty bad yeah un unfortunate situation here we have uh, the best character in the game, who's really good because of a bug, with the worst character in the game, who's really bad because... I wish it was a bug, but it wasn't. It's just yeah. an oversight, I guess, yeah. that they it's, didn't it, give him a ticket. It's definitely by design. There's a line of code in the game that states, except yeah. Anacharis for push blocking. So, by, it's by design. Uh, why? I have no idea. But... <laughs> but uh, Maybe maybe they thought the same thing that we did back then. That the yeah, I mean, I can see I can see a little bit of a reason why. Like they gave him some tools, like the wall backdash. They thought that might be sufficient for, um, you know, a defensive option in Hunter. He also didn't have access to a guard cancel, which every other character in the game did. And he was one of the stronger characters in that game, despite the lack of one. But this is just a different game, and they didn't realize what kind of game they were making at the time, and he ended up being really deficient because of it. Yeah. But yeah, again, this game is highly, highly momentum based. So even despite the fact that this matchup is completely terrible on paper, you can still win. If yeah, you still have mix ups. You still have to block them or yeah. do a reversal, which is very hard. Yeah, you, as long as momentum's on your side that day, you might be able to win if you get them locked down good enough, or if you punish just enough, or if you you're able to intercept any of his attack patterns or stuff like that. So it's not as that's why it's, it's just an 8-2, man. It's just an 8-2. You just 8-2, yeah. It's only 8-2. That's what I just tell yourself. And then uh, maybe you might win. Yeah, yeah there's always that 2. Yeah. Do it Do it for that 2 right there. Yeah. Think about think about that 2 think when of, you're trying to win. Think about that 2. You might send them to losers. Alright, so I can move on from this matchup. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we pretty much covered it. Yeah. That sad state of affairs. Yeah. Let's uh, go directly to the, the patented matchup of America. Mm. This is, uh, so I was saying, yeah. Zabble doesn't have uh, an ironclad lockdown option that he can do against you. This is a different situation. This is almost an entirely different matchup. This is also this matchup is also really bad on the um, Japanese matchup chart. It's 2.5 to... 7.5, very heavily Sasquatch favored. Um, one of the reasons being is that he can do jab jab to get the random bonus and then do a short hop overhead into jabs again. And he can continue doing that indefinitely. Yeah. Um, on top of that, if he wants to stop doing that, he can start doing shorts at some point in time to make you block low. You actually have to react to his mix up, which no player is going to do for any extended period of time. This character is too hard to block when. Uh, played efficiently so if you if you block something up close you're you're gonna take a combo probably on top of the high low mix-up that sasquatch already has he also has command throws and things like that that he can mix up into there if you're just trying to block or backdash or something um like so in the situation right here where you're just walking back at the corner it does look like you can just stand block forever but if you start throwing in those shorts that'll interrupt your backdash inputs or it, it'll open you up for um, combos and stuff and the fact that this character has very high health does extremely high damage it's makes it incredibly difficult for normal characters even to deal with his um oppressive attack patterns but against an Acarus where you don't have option to attack it or a good guard cancel it's pretty much hopeless However, one difference that this matchup has with the Zabble matchup is that Anacharis, I think, is actually quite strong in the neutral match. He, if he's not actually being pressured or he's at frame disadvantage against Sasquatch, he has pretty good options in neutral against him. Um, things like his jab or his jump strong uh, are do a pretty good job of containing Sasquatch to where he is. So it's really up to you to 
try to maintain a certain distance from him and then capitalize on anything like a knockdown that you get into further pressure uh, and just keep that rolling without ever really being on the back foot against him. And yeah. if you are on the back foot, you really have to scramble with some of the options that we talked about before that aren't very reliable, but they just force him to try to mess up. It is possible for a Sasquatch player to mess up doing perfect short hops is more difficult than people give it credit for. Uh, so you you have to try to look for those situations. Yeah. I agree with the general assessment of the matchup. This matchup is primarily performed in the mid screen. So around this, this area. This is the this is the most dangerous area you can be right here. You do not want to be anywhere right here in the general short hop range. You want to be a little bit further away right here so that way it, he has to use long hop to get in and then you can kind of intercept it and or uh if you do manage to tag it you can you know attempt to get in he doesn't have uh like a true like dp reversal but his es ice tower is very annoying so be careful when dealing with it um generally de depending on where you're at and your range you can kind of get over it uh and if you do, uh, it is possible to punish him, but it's very positional based. So like somewhere around here would probably be the best area to get over it. And then you can possibly get down to him in time. Uh, if you did curse super early and he overcommitted to it, it is possible to hit him with that. But like if you did it on the same frame, it's not going to, it's not a option to go for. Your curse is okay to do in this matchup at full screen. He doesn't have a lot of ways to just close the gap really fast and then punish you for it. So from full screen, it's okay. Uh, any closer than that, it's really easy for him to kind of short hop under the curse and then jump up and air throw you or just jump fierce you, something like that. But uh, it is a way to sort of cover yourself from the neutral to kind of start going in to start some kind of pressure. Yeah. Basically, you have to be aware of where you're positioned at. So, like, just be prepared for the danger zone right here. You better be ready when you're right here. If you're not, he's just going to slip in and you can block overhead or low. A bunch and you won't live past like five seconds after that you're pretty much dead the moment he starts up so in in the spirit of trying to always stay with not on the back foot in this matchup the very opening of this round can be a little bit difficult for some people who aren't familiar with what kind of the best options are because you're in a situation at the distance that you start where sasquatch can either just sweep you or hop into your face and do an overhead uh generally one of the best options for that is immediately at the start of the round, if you do back dash jab and he tries to short hop you, he'll land in front of you and then you can do something. Or if he tries to long hop, the jab will hit him. Or if he does sweep, the back dash jab will actually tag the sweep and it'll hit him a little bit there. Yeah. Um, so in the interest of just starting off the round in a situation where you can start to utilize the things that you're best at, that's uh, one of the better options to go for. You see a lot of people, in at least in America, I've seen they start off rounds with sweep and that'll that'll put a stop to that right away yeah yeah this is a matchup where you're gonna have, be trusting of your your poking and your or your zoning gameplay but it is possible to uh utilize your offense if the sash yes. player but mind you if you if you mess yes. up and there's even a, a frame of delay you're gonna get killed also don't do ex proceed attack in this matchup you can get command grabbed out of it yes. Yeah, yeah, um, so actually we didn't talk about the yeah, pursuits, we, I think. Yeah, I, I think I forgot to mention that, but basically the EX pursuit attack is <laughs> minus two on hit, so you get command grab for free, so don't do it. It does do a lot of damage, only do it when it's going to kill. That's kind of, you know, generally the rule for ES pursuits for most characters, only do it when it's going to kill, but it's especially true for an Akaraz, a Necrus who can be punished for it on hit. Yeah. You could use light, I mean, the regular pursuit, and that's perfectly fine. It's not as punishable. Uh, you get to uh, do meaties and stuff off of that. So that one's fine, but the EX one, don't do it. Uh, overall, this yeah, this matchup is based on, entirely on mid screen and how you handle it. It is possible to. Oh, and another thing in this matchup, uh, try to refrain from using a uh, down pyramid dive because he, as you can see, he's a uh, he's more of a square, not a rectangle, but it's still. Uh, happens nonetheless if you do hit him too high he's gonna throw you uh and that can that's the that can spell disaster in this matchup so you're mostly gonna use regular downward pyramid dives and uh normals to kind of what are your way through but you can't this is one of those matches where i do use portal in because he doesn't have an arrow okay move so it is possible to put him in a checkmate situation where you're like 
if you're pressuring him well enough, they're like, I gotta get out, and then they kind of get stuck, and there's not much you can do about it. Whereas uh, the other option, uh, although it, it can do the same thing, he'll land on it, uh, this, the other one does a little bit more damage. Uh, that's pretty much most of this matchup, it's just... Yeah, the, oh. this matchup is also really bad, but it's mostly because of Sasquatch's offensive pressure. There is a lot of things that an Akros can do in this situation to actually mitigate him in the mid-screen. Yeah. There's more play to it. Yeah, there's a little bit more play, but still, like, a really bad matchup. Uh, it's still, it's about, like, uh, they have it at about, like, a 7-3, which I, I agree with. Uh, you can play the matchup, but if he gets in, it, it slides out. Let's move on to uh, Queen B. So, not his worst matchup in the game. In my opinion, this is definitely the most annoying matchup in the game. Um, this is probably the matchup that you have to change the way you play more than any other individual matchup. Mm -hmm. The particular moves that you'll be doing are not as universal. The biggest reason for that is that her crouch is low enough that she crouches under his stand jab, which, as we mentioned before, is his best tool um so not having access to as you can see there margining all of those normals that she crouches under uh when you're in a situation where you're at the advantage and you want to do some kind of offense you're being put in a little bit of a mix-up if you want to use you have to kind of guess if she's crouching or jumping or and then do an appropriate normal so if she's trying to up back or something something like stand strong stand jab Sam Fierce is, will attack her, but if she's crouching, then it'll whiff. And it's the opposite for if um, if you do like stand short or crouch jab or something and she's jumping, then those will whiff. So you have to be very careful with the way you approach this character. It's probably more important against this character to have things like meaties because of that. I, ironically though, this is probably one of the most difficult characters to do meaties on because she has three different wake up timings and her neutral wake up timing is the fastest in the game. Um, so that's the main problem with the matchup is how much stuff she avoids. You have to play very differently against her on the ground. Yep, I definitely agree. Some positives in this matchup are that you can use down pyramid because she's a little fatter than all the other characters. Uh, but overall, like, this matchup is, uh, I would say it's, like, you kind of want to take it similar. It's like you combine the Raptor matchup with the Sasquatch matchup in a way, where you want to, yeah. like, be in a good positions, and you're mostly going to utilize your neutral to kind of, like, change how the character can approach you, because her homing dash is going to home basically on, uh, where, you're, where your character is stationed. But if you move around, you can kind of manipulate where you want it to go. And if you're in a good enough position, you can hit her out of the normals, but that's very difficult for how good the hitboxes are on her, on her normal. So you have to be careful. Uh, primarily... There are some things... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Uh, you can... There there are some things you can do that she has a little bit of trouble dealing with. Um, like if you're in the air and you do uh, jump strong from kind of far away, she doesn't have a great option to just beat that. Usually what she's going to want to do is... Um, CR or something. CR is what you want to watch out for. Something to be careful about is, in this matchup, it will seem a lot of the time, like kind of from uh, a few character distances away or something, and she's trying to dash at you or do jumping things. Cobra Blow seems very good. Cobra Blow will air reset her, or knock her down out of whatever she's doing, and you get some kind of option out of that. But if she's just doing CR in the air, you have to become start becoming very reserved with the things that you're doing because CR will just grab a lot of stuff that you're trying to do. Uh, if you can get her to just do a lot of CRs in the air, that's a little bit okay because that's a less of um, that's a less dangerous option for you to just try to block or deal with reactively. But if she's doing that to trade with a lot of stuff, you you kind of there's a lot of push and pull about what you're using in the match depending on if she's doing a lot of that to punish the things that you're doing that would beat her normal moves or the other way around. Yeah, so overall, you, you want to be moving a, a lot in this matchup, a lot, a lot of neutral. And that really applies for any character, really, but uh, more so this character. So yeah. some of the things you need to know in this matchup, uh, a lot of Queen Bee players do utilize dashing strong. 
as your anti uh, like preemptive jump tool. This is punishable by an Acarus by using uh, you know Gronic Chain. So they're probably gonna switch to a different normal. They'll probably use like dashing light kick or dashing jab or even dashing uh, medium kick, which doesn't work against him, but it's on some characters it does. So they're gonna use utilize these tools. You wanna be out of range for any of the dashing light normals, that way you can combat that, because if you're too close, then you have to deal with the immediate threat of uh, overheads or lows if you do block any of these these dashing light normals. But if they're doing like dashing medium normals, you, you can punish them out of that uh, pretty easily. Uh, other things to note, uh, as uh, Hildur mentioned, the uh, this move will go through her bubble. I have never been able to successfully land it, but it is possible. Uh, Anacris has a lot of trouble dealing with jumping heavy punch for some reason. Yeah, that's a problem move. And it seems like someone will be doing that to you a bunch, and you'll be losing to it a bunch, and you'll think, this is a joke, right? This move is bad. It's not that bad against him. He does have problems with it. Don't feel bad for getting hit with this move. Yeah, you, you might get hit by this move a lot. It's kind of difficult to deal with. Um, because of how tall he is, he can't really... It, it stops a lot of what he's trying to do. Yeah, he has. He kind of struggles against dealing with that move. But also, you don't really have to deal with the move either, because it's, it's like halting her, uh, her entry. So you kind of just readjust to whatever you think she might do. But... It's yeah. very if she's doing that, you're in a better situation than if she was air dashing at you. Yeah. So that's just a matchup adjustment after you've been, I guess, anti airing her enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, general things to watch out for, as stated with CR, this move pretty much uh, just beats out a lot of stuff in the game. As long as it, it hits for that. But like right now, I'm trading with it a lot, which is weird. Uh, but... A lot of the times, the the trades that she'll get is because the Necros has a pretty big recovery on the things that he does in the air, or yes, Cobra Blow, where he just has hurt boxes hanging out on the screen everywhere that she'll collide with because of how active that move is. But... Uh, another thing. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so another problem in this matchup, a little bit similar to the thing that we saw with Sasquatch. Um, well, players, though, in general, from playing against QB, her mix-up is very dangerous. Once she's jumping in at you, you really want to tech her, tech hit her immediately to get her out of there so you don't have to deal with that. And Akris can't, obviously. Uh, so you have to look for another way out. You have to up back or something. But QB also has a pressure string a little bit similar to Sasquatch. It's not as tight, but she can do jab-jab for the Renda bonus and then instant air dash jab. Uh, and Anakras can't really get out of that. Between the, the jabs and the instant air dash jab, you can kind of up back and you'll get off the ground, but you won't have time to do anything. You'll just block her uh, air dash jab and then she can air reset you with something after you've done that. And she can continue doing that for players who have some experience doing this. You see it, um, I think, in the most recent tournament for... Um, there is some Anacris matches in, in Japan where he was playing against QB and you could see a lot of this going on. Jab, jab, random bonus into the air dash jab. Very, very hard to deal with. Um, another one of those situations where you might want to use like the, the neutral jump thing to try to create more opportunities for them to mess it up. But this is, if you get into this situation, it's pretty hopeless. So you, you want to tr try to avoid this outcome at all costs. That's pretty much the matchup, I believe. Oh, yeah, by the way, this yeah, this is one of the characters where Curse will kill, so... Yeah, if you Curse her with an ES Curse in the corner, uh, you can just do Stand Strong until she dies. Um, so the, the risk-reward for ES Curse is even more in the favor of reward in the situation of this matchup. Yeah, that's pretty much it with the matchup, though. At least that's how I feel. Uh, also, uh, B... Aware that her command grab is massively in bowl as well. I believe the 30 frames or something like that. 30 frames, yeah. So you're not beating that. Luckily, it just shoots you to the other side of the screen, but she's going to pursue the attack and get in again. So. Or do a bubble or something yeah, and we're, come we're in behind we're, that. Yeah. So. Uh, Anacris is usually what your best option to do against the bubble is just to jump into it. 
Yeah. Uh, most other characters, they you kind of want to block the bubble on the ground and then tech hit it to push her back. She doesn't get the mix up. And Akros can't do that, obviously, but he can stay in the air for a long time. So you want to jump into it to pop it. Uh, jump into it so that it pops kind of mid-screen. You're not back. And she doesn't have enough time to really get in on you for it. And then you're in the air, so you can't really be mixed up in that situation while the bubble's there. Yep. And I think that's pretty much it with this matchup. Yeah, this this is one. If you play a Necris, well, you you probably hate yourself already, but you'll you'll hate QB almost as much after playing this for a while. Let's see, go to Taubane next. That matchup is definitely pretty bad. Well, all the matches are a Necris against Paletta. Yeah. 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 She's she's one of the ones you can really lock them down. We'll we'll get to that pretty soon. She's coming up next after. So we're doing Talbot right now, and then we already did Fish we already and Felicia, did. then Boleto. Yeah. Okay. So Talbot very similar to how uh, the Fish lockdown works. I'll be right back. One second. Yeah. yeah. So this this matchup in particular, uh, Talbot has the exact same lockdown that Fish does. It's mostly just uh, walking jab pressure for. Anacris has trouble getting out of this situation. Now, I don't think we we talked about it, but throw range in the uh, Vampire Savior is not like super turbo throw range. Uh, it's point blank that you have to be in order to throw somebody. It's not over here or anything like that. So as long as uh, the top lane player is a little further away, they have to walk in order to do their options to like throw. Now, mind you, he does walk incredibly fast, so this is a risk. This is just a risky. Uh, uh, thing to do in general, but it is possible to sneak in a jab if you feel that they're gonna get sneak in their throw. But if not, just you're probably gonna be blocking a lot in this matchup because of the stand jab. But even if they didn't do that string, uh, his jump ins are some of the fastest jump ins in the game overall, and his jump in normals are incredibly, incredibly strong. It's very difficult to beat these jump in normals. You really have to be on point just to uh, beat them. Uh, primarily, your your main uh, way of beating them is to trade with them with crouching heavy punch, but most of the time they just lose out. Um, also, even if you're trying to beat out these jump ins, Taobane has the air beast cannon, which will delay in the air, and you'll probably get hit uh, for trying to intercept this jump. So you have to be prepared for that option as well. Yeah, that's a little bit of a mix-up. The Beast Cannon delays him a little bit, and then you'll whiff your jump, you're trying to do it. Yeah, uh, like, like that'll happen a lot. I mean, you'll whiff your anti-air, and yeah. yeah. You're like, it's a he jumping heavy punch. You're like, no, it's the EX Beast Cannon. Um, EX Beast Cannon is also like a, I would qualify it as a dive kick type, especially the air one. So the air Beast Cannon, like if you block it at the lowest point, is actually plus on block, I think. So, especially the EX one, so. You have to be very careful with dealing with this move. It's, it's incredibly fast. Uh, some things of note to watch out for when you're fighting this character are like, like low forward EX Beast Cannon, especially done done really far away. If, like if you're trying to, if you get too greedy and you try to poke at him, uh, it's actually a frame trap, so you'll get hit. So just be careful. Low forward, low forward is also a frame trap. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. So be very careful with dealing with low forward in this matchup because. It'll lead into uh, you getting hit by Beast Cannon more so than not. Um, Even if you block a low forward and then try to up back afterwards, and he does another low forward in the ESP's Cannon, he catches you in your jump startup frames. You're eating the full thing. Yeah. Overall, very highly difficult matchup to deal with. Um, just based on the fact that his jump is incredibly difficult and he has to kind of mind game with the Beast Cannon in the area. His damage output's very high. Uh, very good option select throw that corner carries. Um, if you do get thrown, uh, he has a command grab as all other characters, but he's not really going to use it. He's just going to have to do normal throw instead of command grab because it's, it's just way better. It leads to corner. Even if you tech the throw, it's going to still corner carry you, so it doesn't matter. Um, yes. Some things to watch out for. Uh, in this matchup, Talbin is one of the characters who can low-profile the second hitbox of Stand Strong. Uh, 
which is a little bit annoying because this character is very jumpy. So you want to be going for those preemptive anteers a lot if he's jumping a lot. But if he's walking on the ground or if he's crouching and not blocking, then uh, the second hitbox of Stand Strong will whiff. If he's blocking, he's a little bit taller in the air for some reason, so he'll block it. But if he's crouching and not blocking or walking forward, he'll go right under that. And if the you're playing against a good Taobang player who noticed that you're going for a lot of these Stand Strongs that are beating out his Antiers, he'll start looking for that and he'll be able to punish you for it by avoiding it completely and into a full Beast Cannon. And it doesn't take very many of those to for him to win the match. Yeah. Uh, this matchup is also pretty similar to the fish matchup that we talked about, not yeah. only because his normals are good, the Galen is uh, a little bit better at it, but also because he has a similar walk-jab stuff that fish has. I don't know if you already talked about that. Yeah, but I, he I, can... I, that's the first thing I discussed. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so Zamar so tells you all about that, then yeah. that's good. We go, through, um, we go through all the pressure strings in the, over here in the Anacre Slam. One of the extra pressure strings that he gets to do against the Knackers that he doesn't get to do against other characters is uh, it's a little bit easier for him to go into his Dark Force. Normally, Galen doesn't really use his Dark Force except as a weird kind of um, like a, a bait to something if someone's mashing like on Wake Up. Like if you knock someone down, you walk up to them, and you anticipate them doing a, a, a DP or something. You can Dark Force through that and then you get a throw and then you can get a setup for his uh, unblockable that he does with the Dark Force. It's a little bit easier to do against an Akros because even if you don't get the unblockable, you can still just jump over him all the time with all these extra hitboxes, and he can't tick, he can't push you out for doing it. And if you do hit him, you get a lot of damage from it. Uh, some players like to use that more than others. That's which I, I wouldn't say it's a a great strength that Galen has in the matchup. It's just a little extra thing that he can do um, here that you have to watch out for. And if he's doing this, you really just you just have to block. You, there, there's nothing that that you can really do to stop him from doing dark force pressure if he meets you and he's got it on. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much it in that matchup, right? Uh, other than like dashing uh, strategies that he, he sometimes does, where he just like kind of just gets in with a dashing normal and then command grabs you. Yeah, you really do have to watch out for him. Like from the the mid screen, he can get in pretty fast. You have to really be on your on your toes with a crouch strong to stop him from doing that. Crouch strong it can be a pretty reliable anti air, except unless he's too far and he does um, uh, dash fierce. Dash fierce also is a little bit annoying in the matchup because um, if you're crouching. Um, well, you're gonna get hit by it anyway. But if he misspaces it and goes too far, it'll cross you up. You were going to get hit by it anyway, probably, because, you know, you were crouching as an overhead, but it just, the the spacing for him to do it and get rewarded for it is wider than you would expect. He can cross over with that, and it'll, it'll grab you. Yep. One thing to look out for against maybe um, Gallon players who are less familiar with the matchup, when they're ending their ES Beast Cannon combos in the corner, if the last Beast Cannon combo goes, or the last Beast Cannon hit goes straight up in the air, which players will sometimes do against other characters, you can do a portal on the ground for free and he'll just fall right into it. He can't get out of it. Um, so that's something to look for for the way they do their Beast Cannon combos in the corner. There are some situations where the Beast Cannon combo will end and you just get a free uh, portal from that. Any little thing that you can do against Galen to stop him from being able to meet you is uh, pretty good if it's reliable. Yeah. And, yeah, so be be aware that that's a thing if they're comboing you with Beast Cannon in the corner. Look for how the last one hits and see if that's something that you can do. That's pretty much it with this matchup. Yeah, another another real annoying one. Yep. <laughs> Never ends. You'll notice that's kind of the, the theme. The theme is uh, you're going you're gonna to get in, uh, perpetual blocks done forever and... Uh... Hope they mess up. Let's see. Valetta's next. Or Peter. Okay. Alright, so next we got Valetta. She is notorious for having one of the easiest ways to kind of lock an Akris down. It's not a it's not a hard lock if she does um like uh like crutch jab or something into forward medium punch. There's a little bit of space there that you can you can get out with things like the the neutral jump but 
there's very little that you can do here. There's just tighter ones that involve dashing uh, for more experienced players, but this is something that you have to deal with because even extremely new players can do this effectively. It's not hard to do, so it's something that she can she can do pretty easily against him. Um, let's see what else. Other just regular dash pressure that she has is going to be even stronger against Knackers because he doesn't have options like Tech Hit, uh, which isn't that scary until the Boletta player shows you a willingness to do command throws. Command throws is really what will force you to have responses to her doing this kind of dash pressure instead of just kind of waiting for her to slip up and backdash out of the corner. Um, so there's not really a good option for you if you get into a situation where she's doing this kind of dash pressure. You have to really avoid her in the neutral for that. And Anacris is okay at doing that, I think. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have to deal with a lot of like the, the kind of zoning tools that she can utilize against other characters since he, he can kind of float around in the air. He d he's not relying as much at uh, closing the gap quickly on the ground with a dash or a hop or something like that. She can't use the, the missiles as much. Her jumping moves are very good, but they're not the... They, they won't crush an Acris as hard as someone like Zabel or Galen who's, who's just doing jumping moves and he can't really challenge them. So this is kind of, in my opinion, a little bit more of an airborne match where she has her double jump, he has a triple jump. So there's a lot of kind of flying around going on. And when that's happening, Anacharis has a big advantage over her in terms of anti-airs. If she's jumping over him, he can crouch fiercer pretty cleanly most of the time. You have to watch out a little bit for doing her doing um, jump roundhouse, which has kind of a disjointed hitbox and will knock you down. And she can um, start her Oki off of that. But the neutral for Anacharis in this matchup, I don't think is that terrible. Yeah, no, I agree. Um... This matchup is another example of a move, like a movement matchup where you're just moving around the screen or being in the air, and you're looking and you're fishing for the BB Hood player to uh, use her either their double jump or whatever movement options they're going to use, and you want to prevent th this like position right here because this is probably the worst position you can be in in the matchup because if you get touched by like a single crock dab pretty much going for a ride but as long as you have a uh, sizable life lead they're gonna have to deviate from it you'll probably take a throw at best but if they have the life lead that that's over you know you can they can just keep doing it and there's nothing you can do about it but she has difficulty fighting him in general because of his range uh the range on his normals kind of help him out a little bit in this matchup and the fact that your anti-airs can actually beat her which is pretty rare because her jump ins were really strong in general but this character can actually contest her uh, aerial mode. As long as you don't accidentally get hit by the uh, jumping roundhouse. One thing you have to watch out for a little bit in this matchup, you can't be too comfortable with um, jumping and throwing things like coffins or curses. Because uh, she can react to those on if she's on the ground with um, Cool Hunting Super, which isn't... So you have to be a little bit careful if she has meter. It's, I mean, it's not great for her. She gets a little bit of damage from doing that, but it's free for her to do because of how long the recovery is on those moves. She can just react to it. Yeah. Overall, uh, let's see. Let's see. Missiles. You can go under them completely. And actually, one of the few characters can actually dash under those missiles, especially Sweep. Very good at getting under those missiles. Um. And then the low one, you can just uh, die kick over them, so like it's not as threatening of a projectile as it usually is in most matchups. And that's mostly because he can just duck under. If he couldn't duck under this high one, then there would be a problem in the match. But it's not. He doesn't really have a tough time dealing with the, the missile or any sort of zoning. It's just this matchup's exclusively just uh, fighting for your position and using your normals to get what you want and then punishing her out of any sort of double jump option. And because uh, double jump is such a comfortable option for a lot of Boletta players, especially in the corner, they want to up back and then jump out or something. Um, going for those uh, preemptive stand strong strings in the corner is very good against her. Boletta is going to be jumping a lot. Uh, but stand strong goes high enough that it'll, it'll hit her if she's trying to get out. But also, if she, if you're kind of out of the corner, uh, you, and you want to dash in, 
and maybe do a jab or something. Uh, you, against Boletta, you would do that maybe a little bit less than against some other characters because she is going to be looking for a way to jump out of the corner. So waiting a little bit can uh, reward you in those situations. She also has a particularly annoying jumping string from far further away. So in this position, it's kind of dangerous because like she can do uh, jumping strong instantly and then jumping medium kick, medium kick. And it's very difficult to beat that string. It's going to give her a really low... Uh, jump in that's very difficult. It is possible to sneak in a crushing heavy punch, but it's very difficult to get if you get hit You'll get hit by a full jumping combo. So Be aware of this this range in particular is very very annoying to deal with Yeah uh, Overall the matchup is straightforward until either this character gets in does infinite block streams with a life lead Or you're both you're both just fighting for position and beating the crap out of each other uh, that's, it's a pretty straightforward matchup other than the infinite block stream. Yeah, you really have to fight to control, to make sure that she doesn't get a good hit on you or blocked even. Um, so it, there's a little bit more pressure on Anacris to control the neutral, but I think he has a little bit more tools to do that than she does. Yeah. So up until the point that she gets in, I feel like he's a little bit favored. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's pretty much it for that matchup. I believe it's like Bishamon next, right? Bishamon, yeah. <laughs> Alright. So this matchup is also um, a little... He's a little bit of a similar character to Boletta in the way that he uses his pressure. He's mostly going to be focused on doing blocks to you. And yeah. Bishamon has a really good infinite block string that he can do to you. Because of the way I think... I believe it's uh, Stand Strong. Both uh, the second hit doesn't have recovery or it's, something? It's a uh, four light punch, medium punch chain. So this chain, uh, it recovers instantly for some reason, probably due to a bug. But uh, basically this is at the start of his infinite block string where he does dashing light kick for light punch for medium punch. You can just do that over and over. Uh, during that, you can pretty much do any anything he wants really. And as long as he gets a bar, he can perform an unblockable and you're pretty much screwed after that as long as the the player has good enough timing to doing that and the meter to do that this matchup is over once he once he starts that up so there is a little bit of a mix-up to the unblockable you can use a regular um anti-pursuit to avoid one of yeah. course he can punish it and if he has more meters then he can keep going um but it is an option that you have and if he's just going to go for it you, you make him waste a meter you could potentially save yourself some life so Anacris has a little bit of play against the uh, um, unblockable loops there that some other characters don't have, but it, it, still, it'll you you just die to those a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, overall, even, even if you wish that. Yeah, yeah. Overall, though, this matchup is primarily an, it's, a, it's another matchup where you're going to be playing a mid screen and trying to prevent uh, Bishamon from getting in. Uh, as soon as he gets in, though, you're going to just he's just going to be all over you doing uh, constant block screens and stuff. Uh, he does have. Like, his anti airs are usually iffy, but since Anacris is so slow in the air, most of the time you'll just end up either trading with dashing medium punch or just getting, like, let's say you do it like a dive pick or something and Bishamon just happen to be dashing and doing this button, you'll just collide with that button or they'll do dashing heavy punch and you'll get hit by that as well. So both of Bishamon's anti airs are actually really good in this matchup. Um, but at the same time, uh, Bishamon kind of sucks at dealing with Anacris pressure. And his guard cancel, although pretty strong, is not good enough to stop Anacris from, you know, riding his momentum to victory. So it's kind of a toss up, but like whoever's doing better in the offensive department is usually going to control the pace of this match. So this this matchup is who's who has the momentum uh, wins this matchup. But. Once Bishamon starts up, he has way better pressure than Anacris does. Yeah, the, the top end for Bishamon is a lot higher. Yeah. Like Mar was saying, uh, Bishamon's anti are pretty good. Like, Anacris is really only safe to be kind of up in the air against Bishamon at more of a full screen range. If one character is like half screen, like, then that kind of distance is extremely difficult for or dangerous for him to be in the air because Bishamon can dash and anti him pretty reliably, and he gets options as an Acris lands. Yeah. Um, so trying to approach, actually approach Bishamon from the air is a little bit dangerous. Um, 
it can also be a little bit difficult just to dash at him on the ground because his fireball is a pretty good neutral tool that he'll just throw out. Um, even if, like, you can you can dash and sweep and it'll trade, but he doesn't get the follow up sometimes. But it's still uh, you're stunned for a long time there. Yep. One good thing that an Acris has in the matchup, like again with the, the anti pursuit thing. Um, one of Bishamon's main strengths, particularly during the second bat after the match has gone on for a while, is that he can convert any knockdown into a lot of damage with his EX Pursuit Super. Uh, there's a little bit of a mix-up for him there whether Anacris is going to use the Anti-Pursuit or not. So he has to think about it a little bit more in this matchup than against other characters, so he doesn't get as much just free damage off any knockdown he gets once he's got, you know, four or five meters. Um, so it's... That's something that an Acris has that he can use, but... Yeah, as stated, um, I feel like this matchup is highly momentum-based, and uh, whoever's winning out on offense is usually going to be victorious in the matchup. But it's, uh, it's definitely in Bishamon's favor if he does to get touchy, though. Me, personally, I've had more success in the kind of mid-range in this matchup using Crouch Short as a poke, mm -hmm. rather than Stand Jab. Um, I think a lot of the moves that Bishwan likes to use will be Stand Jab a little bit more reliably, and Crouch Short will stop some of the things he's trying to do, like his own Stand Jab. Yeah. Or, so even though it starts up a little bit slower, I think it's a little bit more of a reliable option in the mid-screen against Bishamon, who might be dashing in with buttons. Yeah. It's not a bad option in particular, too, because like it makes you less susceptible to, like, jump in or instant jumping normals right because mm -hmm. he'll be able to do the instant jumping like medium punch or something like that but he won't be able to like do anything past that like at best i think he'll be able to do jump heavy that and the light kick but i think that strict i should probably test that string out a little bit more but i believe you can cross your first that one as well but it's very difficult but uh, uh yeah, i can agree difficult with... to recognize the situation do it on reaction yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very difficult to deal with um, but that's how I feel about the match in general. It's, it's kind of similar to the BB Hood one. Yeah. Except that... Yeah, uh, like 7-3 seven, seven, or so. Except I think Valletta is a little bit easier for him to fight. Yeah, but this yeah, is still like, a difficult matchup. It, it's only because like, Valletta doesn't have a reliable anti-air that, that she can use, but Fisherman does. So, mm -hmm. at least in this match. Which is very rare because when you hear people talk about Bishamon and Spears, it's just, it's just not a thing. But in this matchup, it is. Yeah, Bishamon can control a little bit more of the space kind of around him on his side of the screen. Okay, I'm trying to switch this. I think we're on Shinko next? Yeah, got Lele next. Yeah. Here we get to Anakris' good matchups, his uh, four sixes. <laughs> Yeah. Which is as, as good as it gets, losing 4 6. Yep. This matchup is a little strange. Well, Lele is a weird character in the first place, right? So, um, one thing that she's actually pretty decent at doing against Nacris is she can zone him out fairly well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which is a little bit of a weird thing to see in a game like Vampire Savior. But Anacharis, with how tall he is, has a good amount of trouble with the bur the items that she throws. Uh, let's see, what else? There are some good things about the matchup. One of, one of the things about the matchup that doesn't actually change the mechanics of it, but that you'll notice as you play, is that Lele is in the lowest health tier in the game. Um, so any of your chains start to feel like real Sasquatch damage that you're doing to her. So it'll only take like uh, maybe a hit or two and two chains to take a bat. So momentum swings a little bit faster in an Acris's favor. You don't need as much to clean up a bat against her. Uh, also the fact that she's so fat, you can see with uh, Mars Hitboxer, she's one of the fattest characters in this game with she how much really she's sticking out. very fat. Really fat yeah. character. You got, you got to do a lot of gross stuff with uh, the overheads on her. Which coupled with her her low life make her make her bleed a lot. But he, in addition to having trouble with her kind of just zoning, and um, it's difficult just to you, you can't just be in the air and 
air block the, the items and then kind of jump in. She has options like uh, her six fierce, which just hit an Akris out of the air really easy with how big he is and how slow he is. She can actually do that fairly reliably against him um, on reaction from somewhat of a distance. Uh, also, Anakris has a little more trouble than other characters dealing with Tenraiha on block. So, because other care he doesn't have access to tech hit, he has to just sit and deal with all the balls that are falling around him, even if he's blocked Tenraiha. Uh, after which, she can do all kinds of weird stuff. Because he can't tech it, she can also just pendulum all around him, and uh, it's it can be difficult to see when she's going to end that, and then she'll do an overhead and land, and then do some string into Tenraiha or something, probably. So if she starts like really jumping all over you with the pendulums and stuff and Tenraiha, and she gets a decent amount of meter, she's very difficult to actually get off of you. It's difficult to get momentum back once she has the meter to spend on those. Because everyone that you block is just a reset for her into another situation where she can do more pressure into something. Yeah, overall, um... This matchup is incredibly weird because it depends on how the, the Lele player plays. But there are yeah, there's a lot of variations things. that they can yeah. do. But a couple things to note is how to deal with the pendulum itself. Uh, a lot of players do not know how to deal with this move. Uh, the way it works is it starts off in front of her and it goes like in a uh, clockwise pattern. Or if they're in the, you know, the other side is common. But whatever, it's a... Uh, Basically, what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to hit her under, like, the, where the, wherever the blade is spinning at, right? So you're just trying to aim your character's normal to where it is. So, like, if you're a little further away and the trajectory is right over here, you can smack her uh, over here. So, like, you can just do, like, a heavier normal, but if you're a little closer, you want to just start using mediums. And you want to do it rather quickly, so that way you don't get hit by uh, any other blades. Um, but there's a problem... Uh, she can cancel out of this move. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the only that's the only issue. So she's just gonna do Spider-Man swinging garbage, and not much she can do to stop it. Also, uh, I haven't really found an answer to beating a uh, medium punch besides like preemptively doing it. But it's uh, th that normal is really annoying to deal with in this match. Yeah, jump medium punch is very strong. She can kind of just jump with that. You, even if you block it, you can't tech it. She'll come down with the jump fierce, follow it up, and then. Chain into Tenraiha, maybe. Yeah. Or, um, there are uh, things of note, like uh, she has a gong in which she can reflect projectiles, so be very careful with your uh, curse, because she can, can reflect the curse and hit it right back at you. But if you use the light curse and, you, and she reflects that one and you're a little prepared, you might be able to grab that, and she's pretty much screwed after that. Because having access to curse uh, as a uh, command move is really powerful in this matchup. But even then, if you you have another item that you can grab, which is uh, just her regular items, and it, they pretty much function the same way as Lele's does, except for the EX one, in which is uh, you have way better projectile than her. Uh, but basically how this projectile works is it cycles through um, particular items, and when you, like, you, the general rule is whenever I see Akuma, the next uh, item is going to dizzy you. And then you get to do, uh, you can combo her, but preferably you want to do uh, EX uh, Curse if you do hit that, because it's going to maximize your damage. But um, th that's pretty much how our items work. I don't really, I don't have the whole, uh, there is a chart that it goes by, and I don't have that chart memorized, but I just look for Akuma. And then I'm like, oh, it's set. And then... And Akris has way better <laughs> grounded strings than her, so if you touch her and the item's coming out, you can really do really extended combos in this matchup. Yes. And they're really cool, so... Oh, there's a cool Yeah, kind of the gist of it, you'll see it, you know, watching Lele players, you get a pretty good idea. If you get a knockdown in the corner and you throw the... Um, the fierce item, which goes straight up in the air, it's an overhead. That's coming down if she rolls out of the corner, or depending on how deep in the corner you did it, it's it's coming out. You can either force her to to block lows while that's coming down to get you know free combos. It's if she gets knocked down the corner and you have access to the item, that's a lot of extra pressure and protection that you have for your pressure that you get while that's happening. Yeah, 
overall, like, it's a pretty fun matchup in general. It's not, like, the worst matchup in the game. Uh, you have a lot of options for dealing with that, but she does have quite a bit of annoying things that can give an actress a hard time. But it's almost a fair fight, you know? She doesn't have, yeah. like, permanent lockdown or anything like that, so... Uh, so that's good. Some of the things that you might want to be looking to deal with her zoning in this game, you kind of have to stay on the ground for it. Being in the air doesn't work. If you block something really in the air, like, you'll get pushed back too far. Uh, one thing that you kind of want to look for if she's just throwing a lot of items is to try to anticipate a time that she's going to throw an item and then you can do a dash sweep um, from fairly far to knock her out of that and then you can maybe get something started. Um, that's something to look for against her. Yeah. Over if you can grab the item, it changes the dynamic a little bit. You kind of have to take turns throwing the items. Yours takes longer to start up than hers, so you can't really do the item on reaction to intercept it. Uh, you have to wait. If you're both throwing them. Yeah. It's a pretty fun matchup overall, though. I have a lot. I enjoy this matchup quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do. It's less annoying than some of the ones we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everyone above this is, like, super annoying. But this, yeah. one, this one's, like, one of the most fun matches you can have playing this character. Just, mm -hmm. like, it's slightly in her favor, but it's not that bad, where you're like, oh, this is this is really annoying, so I, I don't feel like playing it. Yeah. All of her extended pressure, she kind of needs meter four. Um, she doesn't have, like, really good dash block strings or anything like that that she can just continually do on you. So. Yeah. I think that's pretty There's a lot, They're a lot more neutral in this until yeah, she gets a lot, a lot of meter. A lot of neutral. I think that's pretty much it with this match, right? I can't think of anything else. Uh, uh, I can't think of anything else specifically with her. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move on uh, to... Who we got next? Dimitri. Dimitri. Ugh. Back to the annoying matchups. Yeah, back, very back to annoying. This matchup might seem superficially better for Anacris because Dimitri doesn't have any kind of extended pressure that he can lock Anacris down with. Mm -hmm. But the neutral in this matchup is a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, to play against. I was. We were talking about how Lele is a little bit weird because she can actually um, use kind of a, a zoning game against Anacharis. Dimitri is even more effective at that. Yeah. In coupling zoning with his greater ability than Lele to run away uh, is if he, he can make sure that you don't really attack him if he doesn't want to engage you. Like he, he can play really lame if he chooses to do so. It's a big problem with this character. Yeah. So, one of the biggest issues at the start is how you deal with this uh, Dragon Punch, right? And there are a couple options that you can do. You can, like, just outright punish him for it. Just, like, do, like, a sweep or something. That's, like, the most generic punish you can do to it. It is possible to punish this thing on landing frames, but it's very, very difficult. Um, one frame landing it frames. It is one frame landing recovery, so it's basically, like, old old Ken from Super Turbo kind of uh, punish. Very difficult. Uh, so the way I can explain how to punish that, or, or, or at least get us, so how the timing works is if you see this little this little cross under the character, that is the the axis uh, dot that governs when the character is actually truly in a landing frame, right? So you're basically aiming for the bottom of where that cross is. So you're just imagining where that thing is, and if you understand where it's at, you can aim to get the uh, the frame, right? But most of the time, you're going to end up hitting him out of the air as a reset. In which case, they're probably going to just drag and punch again. So it's kind of like, uh, kind of difficult to deal with that situation. The best thing to do is just to command grab him. With EX command grab, is probably the easiest thing you can do, especially from range. Um, but it's kind of hard to think about that in the moment because he has really good jumpings too. So kind of just... Like, is he gonna jump at me, or is he gonna DP, or what, what is he gonna do? Uh, what else? The air, uh, fire, the air fireball? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so these, this air fireball is really, really hard to get around for an Acarus, especially if it's done that low where it hits the top of his head. Uh, yeah, he wants to throw it kind of like right around the middle of the screen there. Yeah. Where it'll hit anything he's doing in the air, and you can't really do anything standing. Yeah, it is possible to traverse under it with a... Uh, crouching low, but if you do it too far away, Anacris actually stands up for a frame and will get hit. 
not from any fault from you, but because they added a recovery frame to the dash. When you, whenever you do a low, this doesn't happen when you do dashing standing normals. Only when you do da dashing crouching normals. But that's this is how you traverse past the uh, the fireball. But even then, you don't really get much because most time he's already fully recovered. So it's kind of difficult to punish uh, general air fireball usage. Like the best, like the best thing option you can probably do is to do uh, like cobra blow a little bit more in this matchup. So you can at least trade with them, or at least hit them, especially if you're in these positions. But if you're too far away, you're not really going to be able to do much to stop them from getting a fireball on the screen. One option that you do have, if you have swallowed a fireball previously in the matchup, which is fairly easy to do because it follows an easy trajectory and he throws fireballs a lot, is that if he's jumping and throwing fireballs at about that height and you throw a fast fireball on the ground, he'll usually land right about on it. Yeah. And then you can... Uh, follow up with a pursuit or something once you have the fireball it uh limits his ability to just zone you out with that as much especially with the way that fireball collision works in vampire savior where if two fireballs it collide with each other the more recently the more recent one the one that was thrown the most recent will push the other one back and keep going so if he jumps and throws a fireball and then you throw a fireball yours will keep going it so there's you get a little bit more counterplay once you have it but it's not super useful. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's something you you want to try to do it if you can because there's pretty much no risk in going for it. But uh, it's not a just an overwhelming option that will stop him from doing that altogether. The good news is that if you do end up getting the fireball, it does extend your pressure quite a bit. You get a brand new pressure string, especially a meaty. The meaty your meaties actually shoot up a little bit. So you could use projectile meaties, which are really mm -hmm. good in this matchup because uh, that basically stops all the DPing. They can't DP no more because they're going to DP projectile in the face. So it allows you to enhance your pressure. That's the best usage you're going to get, but first you got to deal with the actual Dimitri doing whatever, you know, annoying stuff like dashing around or jumping in randomly or you know, DPing your pokes. And uh, that's what makes getting to that position difficult. If the DP wasn't in the matchup, it would be a little bit easier to handle, but because you have all that stuff, um, it makes the matchup a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Also, he has EX uh, Bat Drill, which you can't do anything about either. So like, he has guaranteed chip outs on him as well. Uh, and then, not only that, you had to deal with a two-frame command grab that he has out of dash. That's invulnerable. Which can come at any time, so... Yeah, his dash is actually a pretty big problem, I think. Uh, when Dimitri dashes at you, you have to guess between three things, generally. He can either do, like, um, he can do regular command grab, or he can do uh, midnight pleasure, or he can do DP. Now your options, or he can do DP, or close fierce, or a command grab. So you usually have to guess kind of which one he's going to do. If you up back, like, close fierce is going to get you. If you're trying to poke him or something, DP is going to get you, and command grab will get you a lot of the time. Or if you're trying to throw stuff at a certain range, that he can kind of dash through that with the invincibility. Dealing with Dimitri dashing at you is really scary here. There's not really a great option that just stops him from doing dash and then some kind of mix-up. Yeah, the only American Dimitri that does use negative stolen was Pockets. Um, <laughs> who, who, who will, I believe will be returning soon. So The return of Pockets, the yeah, second coming. The second coming, so be prepared for that. I'm already prepared thinking about tick throws. Um... My mind is ready. Anyway, uh, yeah, overall, the, like, majority of this matchup is, like, the Dimitri player wants to get in this position where uh, he can harass an Acarus and apply his throw pressure game, in which case, if you have yep. Medes down pack, he has one of the better option selects in the game, uh, option select throws, where he can just repeatedly throw the crap out of an Acarus and not much he can do about it. Um, and then, not only that, he's got to deal with, you know, Pre-entry tools, chipping out, and he's got a lot of stuff to deal with in this matchup. Uh, your, your only saving grace is the attempt to try to control the momentum in this game, but it's going to be a really slow-paced brawl where you know any DP kind of halts any advance that you just, you just all the stuff that all the ground you just gain is just going to go away as soon as you get knocked down by anything. Yeah, kind of the opposite of the Lele matchup that we just discussed, where you can actually kind of 
roll her a little bit once you get something going. Dimitri, even if you knock him down, he's got options that you have to be watching out for and that if they land, we'll reset the situation to his favor immediately. Yeah, overall, this, this is probably like my least favorite fight to fight against, <laughs> mostly because of fighting pockets, but, but uh, also because how difficult it is to just get around all the stuff that Dimitri has in the matchup. But it's it's not like the mo it's not the most unfair fight. It's just really obnoxious fight. Uh, not a favorite fight of mine to deal with, but at least I don't have to deal with infinite block strings. Yeah, there there is some stuff that <laughs> yeah. it's a little bit more of a neutral match than some of the other ones. Yeah, just a more annoying neutral match. But, oh, yeah, very annoying neutral match. Very very annoying, but uh, you still have a chance to win as long as you don't make it. You are good at reading the Dimitri player, which is very difficult. Also, Dimitri's guard cancel is very good. He has one of the better guard cancels in the game. It's it's very good. Anacharis is a little bit better equipped to deal with it if he's doing like crouching chains against Dimitri. Mm -hmm. um, he, he can avoid the hit a lot of times if he's kind of just doing chains and trying to bait it from a little bit of a further distance because yeah. Anacharis's chains do reach pretty far. So that's something that he can use if Dimitri's using a lot of guard cancels to do more of those low chains. But yeah, watching out for his guard cancel is very important. Because that, again, will just reverse the momentum completely. Overall, just a very, very annoying matchup. Very slow. Uh, much more in the favor of Dimitri because he has the tools to slow the matchup down. And you're going to be doing a lot of work just to get him to stop. It's very difficult to throw curses in this matchup. You probably oh, yeah. shouldn't really do that. Yeah, it's... Don't... It's not because working. of how slow it is. He has so many options to get around it. Anything that he's doing anyway probably just goes through it, like his air fireballs or something, or he can just do bad drill. This is probably the worst matchup to throw curses in that I can think of. Yeah, and that's pretty much it with this matchup, I believe. Very annoying, frustrating match, but can be won. You just have to take it slow. Really slow. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost done, man. Almost done. Almost done. Down, down here, we just got the low-tier characters left. We got these low-tier goons. Walk, walk into the pits. Yeah. Well, we got Lilith next, right? Lilith's okay. I should have went with Lilith first, but I went with this chart, which is not accurate anymore. Yeah, so in this chart, they still had uh, Morgan as having a little bit of an advantage over Lilith. Yep. Um, That's definitely changed over the years. Um... But like this, this matchup is a little more fair than all the other, like a lot of the other matchups, because it's more of a one of his good matchups, a six-four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So still in Morgan's favor, but like it's a little bit more fair. But we'll see due to her having really low like defense rating, so you you really hurt her really bad when you do do damage or DP is easier to punish than Dimitri significantly having a four-frame landing recovery rather than one. Um, but, uh, she, her mix-up off her dash is a little more versatile than, uh, Anacris's are, and she can bait the crouching fears pretty well. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to anti air this character in some instances. She also has a really good throw game that always does full damage no matter what. So even if you tech this throw, it's always going to do max damage no matter what, so her throw game's pretty good. And she has a real EX uh, command grab, unlike Lilith, who does not. So she has quite a bit of good things in this matchup, but it's going to be another case of uh, each character trying to out-neutral each other, with no character having like a particular dominating strategy, really. They're just going to try to uh, play this mid-screen, and once whoever gets the knockdown kind of like dictates the pacing of the match. Really, but uh, Anacris has to be careful because he has Shadow Blade or um, like general like ground pokes like Roundhouse can really uh, stop halt, get put a halt in this game plan. Uh, that's generally how I feel about this matchup. Like it's very like neutral heavy in the mid screen. Whoever kind of yeah, this is one of the most neutral heavy matchups. Um, yeah. Because she doesn't really have anything to lock him down. 
Yeah. So you have to keep playing. <laughs> yeah. You get to keep playing. This is another, this is another one of those matches where I have a lot of fun because it's like it's there's no like cheap gimmick or anything like that. It's just besides like the tech throwing, but like neutral wise, it's pretty fun matchup overall. Like you only have to deal with like one bait tool that they have or like them going over your normals, but overall you can play this matchup pretty stable and uh, uh, it. Mostly it can go either way, so it's not as bad as I feel on paper. I think it's, it's slightly lower actually, but it's still slightly in her favor, you know, because of the thing it's about an actress, but I think that he, he has a really good shot of beating this character pretty well. Yeah, there's a couple of things that are a little bit annoying. She's one of the characters that crouches under the second hit of Stand Strong, so you can't just use that um, without thinking about it to keep her from jumping out, because if she crouches, she'll just avoid it. Um, uh, one thing that you can do, Mar was mentioning that you have to watch out for like Ia Shadow Blade a little bit, which does do a lot of damage, and it's a good option that she has to keep you from out of the air. The trajectory that the projectile that she has goes, what if you've swallowed it, is pretty good for creating kind of a mix-up situation there. When you, if you're jumping at her and she's on the ground, she kind of has to guess: is he going to pyramid dive or throw a fireball now? because it just goes down there and, and it's you don't really recover quick enough to follow up after the fireball that much, but it's a good option similar to how Boletta's works where you can kind of just cover the space and it makes her think twice about just doing a DP. She can't just do that there up against you anymore. Yeah, like the blocked EX fireball gives you massive, massive plus frames enough for you to use it as an entry tool as long as they block the thing. Um, They're probably going to tech hit it, but if they don't, it is really good for that. Yeah, it's very good at getting in, as you can see. Uh, so it's very similar to the Light Curse. Um, but uh, overall, the move is kind of... Uh, like, like, I would definitely use this as the primary tool for EX moves in this matchup, because you're not really going to get too many opportunities to land uh, anything else other than this. So it's actually really good to get the fireball in this matchup, I feel. Yeah, it's really good to get a fireball. This is a little bit more difficult of a match to grab the fireball in. She doesn't throw fireballs as much as a character like Dimitri, and they come at a little bit of a different angle, because usually she's going to be doing them in the air. She doesn't do a whole lot of ground ones. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty good if you can grab it. Uh, she is one of the characters who, if you grab her fireball and then try to throw it at her, she can crouch it on the ground. Uh, so that's something to <laughs> think about, but... Yeah, this this matchup not not terrible for Necros. Yeah, it's not it's not super terrible. It's more of a, a normal matchup. She the little edges that she get are that she gets are mostly just due to uh Anacris's lack of the defensive mechanics, while it's not as debilitating as a character who can just lock him down, not being able to tech hit things or not being able to throw is just a factor that adds up over the course of a match and he loses percentage points based on that. But from from neutral, yeah. pretty good matchup for Necros. Yeah. Okay, this match is pretty much done. A lot of the lower tier matches are a lot more easier to get through because yeah. uh, you have a lot more leeway of what you can do. Unlike this matchup, which is fucking terrible. Yeah. So this next one. Uh, all the things that I said that make the Morrigan matchup kind of okay to do for an Acris, it's the opposite in this situation. Um, Lilith has a very effective infinite block string that she can do on an Acris, and then if you try to up back or do something out of it, she'll hit you out of your jump startup frames and that she can confirm into a full LI. It's happened to me too many times. Um, uh, a lot of the, the players that I play against here can just do it entirely consistently if you ever plot against lilith she could just do this forever and any any hit that she lands it's easy for her to confirm from these lights and do a full combo into li which will do a nice 50 percent she does two of these and you're dead that's hard to deal with uh, some of the benefits of the matchup are similar to morrigan she is one of the lower health tier characters even though she does a lot of damage to you you also do a lot of damage to her um, her DP is a little bit worse than Morgan, so you don't have to respect it as much. It is still a DP, but it's very punishable and it's pretty dangerous for her to try to do. Uh, as long as you're playing neutral, she's kind of okay. She can kind of get in and start doing pressure a little bit easier with some of her dash normals. 
because uh, she doesn't fly up in the air like Morgan. She actually has a proper ground dash that's pretty quick, and she has um, some good pokes like Stand Strong or uh, Stand Forward that allow her to get in and make things difficult for an Acris. Um, let's see, what else? She doesn't have a lot in terms of mix-up. She's definitely uh, one of the pressure style characters that we were talking about earlier, similar to um, Boletta or Bishamon. But unlike those characters, she doesn't have access to a real command grab. Her command grab is terrible, and it has a really long start. Probably the worst one in the game. Um, maybe Nacarus's regular hands is worse, but... That's not really something you have to worry about, but her regular grab is something that she will utilize a lot. This is something that's kind of true for Anacharis' matchups in general, is that it's very easy for um, characters to go for tick throws. First, because you can't push block the tick, and secondly, because there's no risk that you're mashing throw yourself. Uh, it's kind of difficult for Anacharis to try to go for even to tech a throw, like I said, the best option I think for it is to mash crouch strong, like down back strong, because it, if they don't do a throw, it starts up at the same speed that his lights do. Um, but if they don't do a throw and you're hitting that, you get like you'll get counter hit. Like there's there's no risk that you're doing anything that starts up faster than five frames. The fastest that an Acris can do anything that will damage your the opponent is five frames. So. Characters in general can just throw him very easily because there's no risk of being thrown themselves. So this is something that Lilith utilizes more than other characters um, just because she doesn't have a lot in the way of mix-up. So she can just go for these throw setups, especially with the kind of dash pressure that she has. Yeah, overall things to worry about are TK fireballs if you're trying to get any entry in. Uh... There's usually a TK fireball on the screen. You might accidentally run into one, so be careful when you're trying to. Do it. One thing you can do about the TK fireballs, if she's doing a lot of those from kind of full screen, you can dash and do stand fierce, and it will trade with the fireball, but you get more damage for that. Yeah. Uh, that'll kind of get you in, and you're a little bit because she gets air reset. It it's something you can do. Yes. Uh, super. She has a super jump, and the thing about her super jump is she turns around automatically if she does jump over you so be careful about this. especially uh if they land in a position where a super jumps and lands a jump light punch that leads to full combo or a block string and you're pretty much you're pretty much screwed after that um other things note soul flash is very strong especially in the corner uh mm -hmm. since you can't really get out of this the situation like at best i think you, you can back dash out of it that's probably your best option uh, but if you're trying to like fight out of it, don't, because the damage up. Yeah, never up. press a button into the yeah, DS Soul Flash. Yeah, uh, you you will get killed. Uh, so don't try to challenge EX Soul Flash at all. Uh, it's particularly powerful, especially in this matchup. But like, an Acarus Backdash does allow him to get out of the EX Soul Flash pressure, so they can't really commit to that. They it's, they're better off just doing button button, you know, trying to keep them locked. Lockdown to get close enough to do, to do this, uh, and that's much better to do than any like soul flash pressure in general. But at the same time, you know they're gonna still kind of go for it if they, if they can get away with it. Um, do not do like curse, especially if she has a bar. If she has a bar meter, do not do any air curses or don't even do jumping medium punch for that matter. Uh, unless, yeah. <laughs> unless I think it's like only at the max max range uh, does she get pushed away enough. But like if you, she's too close and you she air blocks anything you do, it's gonna lead into LI and it's gonna do a lot of damage. On on that note, if you're blocking her in the air and she does a full um, air chain, be very careful about trying to punish her with something like a, a stand roundhouse afterwards because some amount of the time they cancel the last hit of the chain into LI just as an extra little frame trap there that a lot of people don't expect yeah that's it's similar to morgan morgan can also do that but um much more dangerous she's, character. yeah also like morgan she crouches stands strong mm -hmm. so it's something to be careful about when you're trying to pressure her but uh 
you will mostly do yeah. she's she's a grounded pressure character she wants to uh, set up a position where she can repeatedly either do tick throws or uh, a grounded pressure string and then convert into big max damage but this is still a very heavy neutral uh, grounded based matchup where you're just trying to control mid screen as long as you have a stable control of mid screen you have a chance but once the pressure starts coming you're pretty much screwed yeah, from neutral, the Necrus is pretty decent against Lilith. It's just that once you get started, then your odds really just drop through the floor. Yeah. That's. I think that's pretty much the matchup overall. It's... Yeah, I think I think that's. I can't think of anything else right now yeah. specific to her. Yeah, it's not specific to her. In general. Uh, we're on to the bottom three. <laughs> we're almost done. I guess Jetta should be higher on the more modern one, but... He, yeah, he definitely is. Uh... Alright, this is uh, top of the bottom. All right. Yeah, so All we're right. doing doing Jetta next. This is a weird one. Although, more recently, he's considered uh, the fourth worst character in the game rather than the third worst. Morgan's kind of dropped down she a couple of spots to, and yeah, taken his slot. Yeah. But this, char this matchup is... Uh, is weird. Um, so, Jetta can do a lot of oppressive stuff to Anacharis, like once he kind of gets in on him, he can do a lot of uh, dashing overheads and mix-ups and things like that. The neutral in this matchup is also really weird to play. Um, Anacharis has difficulty just anti-airing Jetta because half of the time he's going to stop his, his momentum to do a wheel and then all of your anti-airs, of course, take forever and it whiffs and he's going to be able to punish you very easily. But it's also very easy to anti-air him if he actually commits to something, like Crouch Fierce will be pretty much what he's doing in the air, if it's at all close to him. Yeah, as far um, as I, I've been noticing, uh, Crouch Strong is very, very good in this matchup. It stuffs a lot of stuff in this match, like uh, yeah. like dashing, dashing normal to lose outright to it, dash medium punch to lose. Like I think Crouch Strong is one of the best things in this matchup. The issue is not more so that you can anti-air him, the issue is that he has an air dash. So how is he going to approach is more of the, the the problem rather than, oh, I have these options and I can do them. So, well, how is he going to come in? Uh, he can come in, like, numerous ways. He can halt his, his approach by doing a fireball. It's, kind of, it's really annoying. So, like, the best answer in this matchup is to obviously commit to doing pressure and, um, you know, just kind of stopping him from even getting to the air to the first place. And that'll kind of, like, reduce those odds. Yeah. Uh, that happening, but yeah, Crouch Strong is very, very good in this matchup. I feel like it's one of the best uh, anti air normals in this matchup in general. Um, On the other side of things, Jetta also has some similar situations where he can use uh, Crouch Medium Kick a lot. Crouch Medium Kick would beat a lot of what an Acarus is trying to do from kind of a mid range. Like if you're trying to do any kind of pyramid dive thing from a mid range, it will completely stop you from doing that. You have to. Um, really be on top of him to be doing those pyramid dives. If you're trying to do them kind of from like do like a jab into a pyramid dive, that's the sort of range where you'll really get stuffed for it. Yeah. Um, let's see what else is in this matchup. Uh, Anacris kind of has a like Jetta has like this weird like ghetto trap where he like yes. can throw ex wheel and you land on it. Anacris can kind of halt that yes. trap because like usually they'll like go for uh, this. After it is usually most of the time guaranteed, but Anacris can do uh, EX Curse after that. And it's kind of call stuff from doing it. Oh yeah, and also EX Curse kills in this you, you can't get out of this. Yeah, similar to QB, you can just do stand strong. Yeah. Uh, but like the way I feel like this matchup should go as of right now is I have to like yeah. keep them grounded as much as possible, so that way you know, mm -hmm. I can stop him from getting in any aerial approach because like due to like having to figure out what the Jetta player wants to do makes this matchup way too difficult and it can get out of hand really fast uh if you will yeah you can deal with all of his options in the air but it's really a mix-up on which one he's going to do like you just have to guess if he's full screen and he dashes at you which is something very easy to react to you can see i need to do something but he's going to do either wheel or a button and the approaches that you want to have for either of those are opposite. And that's uh, probably, I think, the main thing that makes this a little bit difficult yeah. as a neutral match. 
like a lot of the the buttons and stuff that an Acris has of the things that he can do seems like they would match well with against the things that Jed is doing, but just the way he shifts the momentum with how he's approaching you with the wheels and stuff make um make it not as simple as that. Yeah. Uh luckily uh Jed doesn't have any like real knockdown series, because if he did this matchup would be way worse. But he does have a throw. And uh, whenever the throw occurs, he's going to definitely set something up and you'll have to deal with it. Uh... His wheel is one of the better items in the game to grab if you can. It's m one of the more difficult ones to do, though, because it just appears at a given point instead of traveling through space. Uh, you have to already be where it's going to land and then be doing it instead of waiting for it to travel to you. You can't really see that it's coming and then grab it. You'd s a little bit more of a guess, but if you can get it, there's, um, you can use it a lot better than Jetta can actually because you have better ground pressure and better knockdowns, or actual knockdowns off the of chains, I should say, into yeah. the setups again. Like, an Acris can utilize something that Jetta has a hard time doing. So like, you can do the, uh, the uh, pseudo unblockable, I guess, where you like you like block something and they can't switch their guard stance, but you're stuck. So like let's say if Jetta blocks EX wheel low, you can do an overhead and he you can't switch guard quick enough, so it's basically unblockable if you get it quick enough. Or yeah, you, during block stop you're stuck in. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know. So you're just basically reacting to whichever uh, whichever one he's doing, and he's just pretty much screwed. Especially if, since how many meters the Nacris usually has. Usually has like like eight or nine meters of this stuff. He's pretty much screwed. There's yeah, so usually an Akris doesn't get to spend his meter that much, so if he gets one of these items that's real nice, or these projectiles that's real nice, then uh, he, can, he can start spending his bars. Yeah, but uh, it's I rarely catch this thing, I think I only caught it like once. Uh, it's way too difficult to catch, especially with how many options you gotta think of, or how many angles he can attack, it makes it too difficult to even consider grabbing it. But if you do, uh, it changes the matchup completely. It's like a it's a completely different matchup. Mm -hmm. um, he, it really limits Jetta's ability to just dash in at you from full screen, which he can kind of do beforehand. You can just be putting out these projectiles that really muck up the ground for him. He has to navigate around them more carefully. He can't just come at you as easily. Yeah, and Akers is just way better at using his own projectile. Yeah, completely. Like he's just like a brand new character. It's the buff I always wanted. Yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, you also have to deal with uh, one of the better dark horses in the game. Um, yeah, this is Jetta doesn't have great pressure against an Acris. He can do like dash rings and stuff, but it's not the same kind of lockdown that some of the other characters have. But if he turns this thing on, he can actually just keep doing stuff at you. Whereas other characters, if they block, they tech it, he has to deactivate because it's a little bit difficult to move in neutral. But he can just keep going at an Acris with this. Yeah, and there's there's many strings you can you can do to you know keep pressure or keep a combo going. You can do like you know jump like medium punch like this string and he can't get out of that. Or uh, you can do the uh, the actual true combo string where you just keep doing that and he's pretty much stuck. And basically the idea is that if they if they're doing repeat like you basically want to default to blocking high as the generic strategy. To getting out of this uh, because they're gonna just eventually they're gonna have to go for a low and they're based on a timer right so like they can only do so much damage off the low but again they can like not do that or do throws or something and kind of like sneak in some damage or something like that it's a very strong option and if you like if you slip once or you accidentally block low you can lose all of this all your life really quickly. yeah it's <laughs> Pretty dangerous. Although, if he just activates, um, you can kind of just up back from neutral. Like, if he's not doing it and catching you on the ground immediately, he has a little bit of trouble actually forcing you down because of how long an Akron's can kind of float around. Yeah. Um, so, it's it kinda, a little bit less it, it than it is as a neutral. This kind of like mix up mind game thing where they're kind of like, who's going to come in, you know? Mm -hmm. But Jetta doesn't have as much time, but also you can't really you can't punish it because it deactivates. Uh, uh, you can't punish it if 
He deactivates on the ground, which he should be doing. If yeah. it deactivates in the air accidentally, then he's vulnerable while it while he lands, but that's... It, it's not really punishable. Yeah, it's, it's way too hard to punish. Um, the other only option that you can do is during the startup of that, you can swat uh, Jetta out of the air with uh, standard medium punch. Uh, you want to aim for when the timer is about to activate. So when it's about to go down, that's when you aim the button. And that should uh, spot him out of there. There's nothing really Jedi can do about that. Uh, preferably, you want to do it with a dash, so you can, as you can see, I, I had a mix-up option off of that too, because um, you can, you know, kind of like walk through, you know, like left-right walking mix-up. But uh, that's usually if you're going for that and you miss it, it's because you did it too soon. Yeah. That's that's going to be the biggest problem with that. So you yeah. really have to do it a little bit later than you it f then feels natural. Yeah. Like, that can happen. Like, the moment you miss, you're pretty much dead. So, like, make sure that you're on point when you do that. But the safest option to do is to, like, jump away from him. Not deal with it. Try to prevent him from getting in there. Just block him high. It's probably the best option to do. But, uh, you, you can swat him out of the air and you can keep the pressure on. But, mind you, like, if he gets any sort of knockdown or any hit and he starts up again, uh, you can lose a lot of life for that. Overall, that's pretty much how the matchup goes. It's mostly just like how, like, you have good anti air tools that you can use to stop a lot of his approaches. It's not like he can walk, you know, he doesn't have a normal dash, he has a ground dash. I mean, he has a like a air, like a pseudo air dash or something, but like this crouching medium punch stuffs a lot of the buttons that he can possibly do. So it's mostly like who's coming in and when are they gonna do it, right? And that goes for both sides too, right? Um, very strange matchup on neutral. But it can snowball once uh, Jedi gets a bar. Yeah, if if he gets in with a with a big hit, he can just do some resets, dash, dash uh, roundhouse, some overheads, uh, chain, and that's gonna be seventy percent or so. You can lose you can lose about it real quick. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it with this matchup, at least on my end. So um, I guess one very small thing I would add is uh, in matchups, Jedi will often put you in a situation where there's a wheel kind of hanging out and he'll do uh, his pit super. Uh, Anacris oh, yeah. is a little bit better against some other characters of avoiding that because he can use his float to get off the ground on in one frame. Uh, it's a little bit unintuitive to do because even for regular characters, most of the time you have to jump into the wheel, take some damage for it. But he gets a couple extra frames to react to it because he can use the uh, the one frame one in there. It's a small thing, but it, it helps against those. Yeah, yeah, it does. All right, bottom two now, man. We're almost done. <laughs> we, we did it. So yeah, next we got Victor, which I think is actually probably the closest thing. Other than Anacris, well, I don't know. It almost seems better than it against Anacris himself, because if Anacris gets in trouble against himself, he's in more trouble than he is against Victor, I think. Um, Anacris has almost complete control of the neutral in this matchup, I would say. Yes. Victor really has to work hard to get in. Uh, once he does get in, he is pretty dangerous with um, like the strings that he can do into command grabs or like DP command grab, things like that that he can do. He's actually dangerous. And the fact that a lot of his stuff doesn't actually end in knockdown gives him pretty reliable ability, a pretty reliable ability to continue doing what he's doing. But when he's not in, he has to work very hard. Um, Anacris can crouch medium punch pretty much any jump in that he does from further a certain distance away. And any jump in that he does from further than that, he can crouch fierce it. Uh, also, Cobra Blow is very good at anti-airing pretty much anything he's doing here. Because uh, you can do Cobra Blow in reaction to his jump almost immediately. And it'll just, it'll push him full screen, it'll knock him down. He can't crouch Cobra Blow either, so you can kind of just do it in the neutral game. Uh, better players will guard cancel it as much as they can, you get a knockdown. But if he's full screen, he doesn't really get a whole lot off of that. So, you can, you can control him from in the neutral very much by pushing him out with the Cobra low, and if he's trying to jump over that or jump in at you, you have 100% reliable anti-airs to stop him. Yeah. He can be a little bit difficult to actually pressure. Like, you'll get a knockdown, and um, 
like you, you want to start doing your mix-up game and stuff he's a little bit taller so it's a little bit difficult to do deep pyramid dives on him that will be beneficial to you and he has a lot of health so you don't get as much damage off of chains and each of these individual hits that you're trying to play a slow game against will, won't add up as quickly but he, he has a hard time dealing with neutral yeah very hard time it's, it's probably one of the easiest characters to out neutral in the game with the necros uh, as long as you keep it stable and don't let him get any advantage, you can pretty much do whatever you want to him. He really struggles with the Nacris' buttons. You can pretty much just bully him to death. Um, but at the same time, he does have a lot of health. So he has like the highest defense rating in the game. So you got to hit him a lot. So th that means there's enough time for you to accidentally screw up and then, then he can start uh, working uh, his game on you. Also, he's got, you know, free chip out and stuff like that, so if your life's too low, he's gonna he's guaranteed chip you out. Um, this is also a matchup where the anti-pursuit portal isn't useful really at all. Um, he's not... the move that he uses to... if he wants OTG damage on you is... it doesn't care about that. Yeah, he has two so, of them. Yeah. Which I can't do. <laughs> uh... There's also a weird like guard cancel meta game because it's very difficult to punish his guard cancel actually. So what ends up happening is like he'll guard cancel. Let's say I spaced it in a way where I can block it. Well, like it's very difficult to punish it because it'll hit you really late, right? So it'll block really late. And when you try to punish it, he'll just guard cancel again. So it just creates a loop of guard canceling. Really annoying. Like, it'll just keep going like this on and on until one guy deviates from her screws up. So, kind of an no annoying thing in the matchup. But overall, Nacris pretty has a pretty easy time in this matchup, mostly because he can just completely dominate the neutral on this character. There's not much he can do to stop it. Uh, Victor does have okay uh, dash pressure once he does get in with, like, dash short and... Uh, he could use uh, Stand Jab once he's in close pretty effectively, but the, the main reason why that's not as big of a deal as it is against some other characters is it's so hard for him to get in there. Yes. Yeah, overall, this is definitely one of Anacris' uh, easier matchups, but like yet again, uh, he doesn't have any of the, the tools to get that, and because the life uh, total is really high in Victor's favor, you kind of can't screw up. If you do screw up, then he'll just... Yeah, like, he can make a lot more mistakes than you can. Yeah. He'll just out-damage you eventually, and the life will kind of just even out, and you know, just, he'll just win because he'll just throw you or something. But this matchup's easy to keep yes. it really stable at the same time. Mm -hmm. you, you have a lot of control over what he's able to do. Yeah. I think that's Pretty much in this matchup, it's probably the most straightforward matchup he has. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, we, we did it, man. It's the final one. <laughs> we got the the best matchup. And now Chris's best matchup. Yeah, this is it. The end of the character right here. The mirror. So I say this is the best matchup, but this matchup sucks. Um. Yeah, this is actually like a really terrible mirror. It's very boring. Mm -hmm. One of the most boring mirrors of all time. It's just like, both these guys are going to jump around, throwing coffins all the time, trying to keep each other back. One guy's going to be doing jump medium punches, the other guy's going to be throwing coffins and stuff. If one guy performs curse, he's just screwed himself because the other guy's going to eat it. And now he just became the best, like a way better character. And yeah. And Acker sucks really bad at dealing with his own pressure because he has no way out of it. So he kind of just gets stuck in the in a dive kick vortex where you just keep. In particular, you don't really want to knock him down. You just want to keep doing this over and over. Because he sucks at dealing with his own pressure. Yeah, he can hit you out of it, but like it doesn't matter. Like especially if you get hit like from far away, you just reset. And he can't really close the distance on himself. So the matchup just devolves into a boring. Uh, like a really boring turtle fest where one guy is gonna try to grab his the curse or they're gonna just keep throwing coffins until one guy screws up or deviates from this this game plan and then... yeah that's how bad this matchup is is that it's almost completely defined by a move that's borderline unusable in a lot of other matchups 
they're just going to be throwing coffins at each other the whole time. And it's the coffin metagame is actually really weird um, because like it, it the coffins will hit you sooner if you're higher in the air, obviously, because it's coming down from the air. So there's a little bit of a... And you can't really do coffins at the same time as the other guy. You'll just trade and that'll change your situation. So there's kind of a, a thing in the air where you're just floating, waiting for the other guy to throw a coffin. Then you could throw a coffin. He doesn't have an air throw, so like they can't really stop each other from just being in the air floating next to each other um it's yeah it's really strange like i said like mar said you can't really deal with his own pressure but his uh dash rings aren't tight enough that like he can back dash out of the corner from his dash strings so if possible you kind of want to prevent the other player once you've started pressure on him from getting into the corner you want to be able to do something like let's say like ES hands or something before you get to that point and they can just backdash out of the corner. Um, but yeah, it's because he's so scary on the ground, they take to the air a lot. He can't really punish himself that well for being in the air. If you like try to attack the other Nacris player on the ground, it's, you know, it's easy to do dash strong or crutch fierce or something, but from the air, you're kind of far away and you're doing coffins and stuff to cover yourself to prevent that from happening. Um, so yeah, this is a, a really strange matchup where both players are kind of flying around and one player will get a hit and he'll do like get like two or three combos because Nacris can't get himself off himself and he'll take the bat and then eventually just win from there. Yeah. Not much to know about the matchup other than the fact that it's going to deviate. Uh, so one guy's going to eventually deviate from the coffin drop strategy and then the, the match just come, becomes a scramble fest to whoever hits who wins. Yeah, 5-5, five, five, but it's no fun. <laughs> um, probably my second least favorite matchup to play in the game. QB being my least favorite, but even though this is 5-5, five, five, it is this this matchup is not fun to play. Yep, it's very boring. Very boring matchup. To that point, I don't think Mar and I have even played each other more than, like, once, if that. Yeah. Like, no Anacris player wants to play this mirror. That's just not a thing I, I, I that they want to do. I don't want to play the mirror. Yeah. 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 But I think that's pretty much it with the, with the matchups, right? I can't yeah, I think that covers uh, the character matchups pretty well, if generally. We didn't go into a whole lot of specifics about the matchups, but... Yeah. Um, that's A lot of that stuff you kind of just have to feel as you're playing them, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, they're not common at all. Especially nowadays. Yeah. Is, there, is there another Anacris in, in America since I left? Um, Do you have to worry about that at all? There's actually more Anacrises here than there were when I first came over. Some people have been picking them up. That's really weird. There'll be like four or five at the tournaments now. Um, there's one in SoCal. Uh, There's not many. I think there's just one in SoCal. That's it. Well, I think there's might be one in PNW, but he doesn't like travel, so. Oh okay. Uh, but other than that, and then there's the the one there's like people who do pick them, like snowco guns, plays them on the side or something. Uh sure. A lot of people play him as a sub. So Anacris as a character is actually pretty easy to play. He's not a difficult character with a lot of execution or anything like that. His game plan is mostly kind of simple. You can kind of get what to do. There's a lot of matchup specific stuff that you have to learn if you play him as a dedicated character. But most of the time in America, especially against people who aren't that familiar with the ways to utilize his or to take advantage of his poor defense, like he's really good. Uh <laughs> Like, he feels like a good character against people who aren't taking advantage of the fact that he can't tech it or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, another point, I guess, to make is that, like we were saying, Anacris is this bad because he can't tech hit. Uh, so a lot of people that you would play against, I guess this is more of an American thing, but uh, an example of how important it is to learn how to tech hit when you're playing this game, if you're playing a different character, obviously. If you're not tech hitting, your character is as bad as Anacris is. If you if you're not going to be doing that, um, so Anacris, you can see how all this stuff just accumulates into making him the worst character in the game. It shows how important it is to learn those things. 
Yeah, I agree. The the best advice we can really give you is to not play an accurate. This, this is I I feel like this is almost just kind of a, a PSA to tell tell the kids you don't want to play this character. You don't want this. It'll mess you up. Yeah. But if you do end up doing that, we, we're giving you the best advice that you can possibly get for it. Cause... Yeah, we've given you the best advice for the worst character. Yeah. Um, so, if you're going to take the journey, just follow these guidelines. It will kind of smooth it out just a little bit, but it's going to be hell. Especially now. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I think that just about wraps everything up, right? Yeah, and in the words of uh, Savior Meister himself, this is the destiny of Anacris. It's yep. to lose. Yeah, his destiny is to lose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, um, I'll continue to uh, do some more character breakdowns. Uh, well, hopefully with uh, another player with a different character. Hopefully, uh, you know, I'll be... You know, man, doing the same thing, manning the character, both, and then uh, the other player will kind of just like give the guidelines of what what they want to explain. Um, I'll also be doing match video critiques. Uh, if anyone has any match videos that they want to send me, uh, I can break down those as well. Uh, I'll have the the game on as well too. It's just to kind of show you know what you could possibly and this is not just for specifically for big bsav either you can send me pretty much anything unless it's uh some weird games or obscure titles that i don't understand in which case i would need an expert to come on here but uh that's the plan for this stream is to uh kind of just like help players to understand their characters and uh kind of work things out for everybody yeah <laughs> mercava strats uh, sure, I'll be working on that character. I'm actually working on that character right now. Um, but it's going to be a little while uh, until I can break down some of the matchups. Uh, but yeah, just like, it doesn't matter what game it is, even if it's like a, a 3D game or something, I can kind of break down the matchups uh, pretty well. So uh, We'll be utilizing a, a website called Flow Feedback, uh, where I'm going to attempt to... Uh, uh, use that in real time to break down the matches and uh kind of like leave the not only like have, you'll have a video version of the feedback but i'll kind of like be going following along and kind of adding it in there as well so uh yeah that's the plan for the stream i hope you guys enjoyed everything uh anything uh you want to say before we uh head out uh no that that's all i've got uh you should probably follow my doing this stuff because he's really good at it i had uh, a lot of fun today talking about my favorite character in a video game yep with yeah with someone else who suffers through my pain yeah um so we we can share that i guess yeah yeah uh oh no problem uh i'll be doing this a lot more frequently now that i have a good internet and a better uh computer now so this is just the beginning. We just—I just wanted to get the this character done and out of the way. I've been playing him for eleven <laughs> years, uh, so that way players can understand you know, his options and stuff. And you know, hopefully, we can all—you know—maybe a new Anacris player won't like be as frustrated or at least be knowledgeable enough to kind of like understand their game plan of what the character is supposed to do and uh, uh, in the our opponents understand you know what the matchups are is gonna kind of play out and kind of make a new game plan maybe go about it a different way so it enhances the meta in a way so today i guess there's a little bit of a preview of uh what mar and i have been working on kind of an update to the necris wiki page on the mizumi wiki so this was kind of just some of the <laughs> thoughts that we have that are probably going to go into that make it a little bit more thorough yeah but... Yeah, we'll be uh, like tackling on the wiki and uh, kind of enhancing it a little bit, uh, getting everything in there, kind of closing out that that chapter of the character where we have you know to get all the data out. It probably, ironically, he's probably the most complete like character on the Mizumi <laughs> page anyway, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> I guess it's just easier to strategize with bad characters. Um, but yeah, that should that should just about close it, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be uh, shutting down the stream now. Uh, 
Yep. Uh, well, before I go, um, I will be, like, my schedule for the streaming, usually, like, weekends I'll be free. Like, I can pretty much do, like, this marathon kind of stuff. Uh, but, uh, weekdays, it'll be probably around 8.30 p.m. to, uh, about, like, roughly 10.30 uh, p.m. Uh, Central. And that'll be my uh, general like stream schedule until like uh, like our office moves and maybe I'll get to extend the time limit for that. But uh, weekends, yeah, I can do like marathons and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yep, <sighs> that's pretty much it. All right, guys, I'll see you again soon. Uh, I'll probably do another stream tomorrow. Probably just like either starting the uh critiquing or i'll just play games or something and go through my tr my weird training methods or something like that that'll probably be the next stream so either it's going to be weird training methods or i'm going to help players out one of the two so we'll, we'll we'll figure it out just uh you know contact me on twitter at uh curse underscore mighty mar uh or you can uh follow um hilder at kawabunga hilder as well and uh if you have any questions for uh learning an just hit us up yep yep that'll be it i'm always happy to help maybe save some lives pick a different character yeah yeah don't <laughs> do not play the character but you can play the character that's fine yeah uh all right guys catch you guys later peace <laughs>